Hey, everybody. I'm Jane. Um, I guess I'm Dorothy. And yeah, yeah, that must make you Dorothy. Uh, and I've had a, a short sci-fi career of um, a little bit of Star Trek um, and some Buffy and some a lot of Whedonverse and some Battlestar Galactica. And I'm now in Once Upon a Time. Um, and uh, I co-created a web series, Husbands, and Dorothy invites me in to speak to her class about that. Um, but Dorothy's career, uh, I think you probably all know about. Do you want to just outline some of the amazing things you've done? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got, we've got time to go through it. <laughs> my, my feeling is I've always been a working writer. Very good. Period. <laughs> I love that. Um, the system that you were working in, the, the come in and pitch me a story and you can make it, was the freelance system. Yes. That is pretty much gone now. I, I saw like the last tail end of it when I used to pitch at TNG, but it's, mm -hmm. it was, it was going away at mm -hmm. that point. Yeah. Um, what, were there things that you miss and like about that system where journeyman writers could travel from show to show? Well, I've always felt, you know, you're working on a show and some outside writer comes in and tells you the story you never thought of because you're so close mm -hmm. to all the material and the characters that you never thought of that one. Mm -hmm. And that's how I made my career. A lot of times I came in and told them the story they didn't think of. And, you know, oh, okay, let's, let's do that. Uh, sometimes on a first assignment they say, we want you to do the story. Okay, fine. Second time I'd come in, I'd say, I've got a story to tell you. <laughs> and that's great. And just about every time I sold it. And at some point around here, you started using DC instead of Dorothy. About uh, the, the sixth show I sold, uh, I was getting turned downs because it's like, well, you know, a woman can't write this show. Yes, I can, but, you know, you're not going to believe it, so there. Uh, so I started telling my agent to put it out, and, and I was writing on script pitches and everything. It's DC, Fontana. Did you ever walk into a room where they were expecting a man? Not really. By, by the time, by you know, the time I had managed to do that, they knew I was a woman and they didn't care. I, I swear to God, I have only worked for men. I have never worked for a woman, uh, which is sad. Um, but not unusual. Uh, yeah, not yeah. in this town, no. Yeah. Uh, but I always had a good reception, a good hearing, and most of the time I sold the story. You, and you go to work for Gene Roddenberry. He knew I'd been a writer. He knew I'd sold stuff. He said, read this. Tell me what you think. And it was Star Trek. And I said, uh, it's really, really good. It was the USS Yorktown and a whole lot of other stuff that was different. Uh, but I said, who plays Spock? Because mm -hmm. Spock was always there. And he pushed a picture of Leonard Nimoy across the desk at me because Leonard had done a lieutenant. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, great. And you know, other stories to the contrary, Leonard Nimoy was always Mr. Spock all the way through. Martin Landau was never considered. That's a big rumor. Mm -hmm. I, I want to put it to rest. Uh, no, no one else was ever considered. It was always Spock. It was always Leonard Nimoy. You've had closer relationships with the actors that you've worked with than I've seen on a lot of a lot of shows I've worked on. So you you were still friends, obviously, with the Star Trek actors, oh, yeah. and um, so it sort of started there that you you felt free to go down and talk with the actors. Yes. Um, yes. Well, on Star Trek, after the first year, uh, and I was story editor. I went down and I talked to every one of the actors and said, you've been in the, living in this skin for a year now. What have you learned about this character? And I wrote it down, and then I put it in the Bible uh, with Gene Rodmary's approval. But uh, that was where Joanna McCoy came along, Dr. McCoy's daughter, because I suggested, how about if he has a son? She says, how about if he has a daughter? <laughs> okay, cool. Much has been made of the fact that um, sort of McCoy as heart and... Spock as head and, and Kirk as the captain who has to integrate, even play mm -hmm. the two off against each other to find the balance to, to be the captain. Was that something you were consciously thinking of? Not really. It just worked. It just came into being and we saw it worked and we kept it going. Let's yeah. talk Romulan Commander, <laughs> one of the best characters in the history of television. When she turns that chair around and we see it's a woman and the audience in 1960 whatever clutched their pearls and went, oh my God, it's a woman. Mm -hmm. But Kirk and <laughs> Spock don't. Was that always, was there ever a discussion of should they be surprised to be a CEO woman in command? No, I think that although it wasn't established that there would have been women commanders in the, you know, the Federation fleet. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I just said that's the way it is, you know, and so it's also that way in the Romulan fleet. Mm -hmm. um, it was really based on the Pueblo incident, which was, you know, very big news at the time. Uh, so they're loosely based, but... Um, 
it was an interesting story because there were changes made after I turned it in that uh, you know made the Roman commander a little too girly, uh, which <laughs> wasn't me. Um, but I did like the idea of her being there and and having to deal with these you know two humans. Are there Star Trek episodes out there that don't have your name on them, but that are largely you? Uh, actually, that would have been determined by the guild anyway. So, and because it automatically went to arbitration. So, what I had my name on, I I mm -hmm. contributed to substantially, and what didn't, I didn't. You know, it was just sometimes it was just fixes, things uh, in dialogue or whatever or manner that had to be tuned up. But uh, when it was a substantial rewrite, the guild gave the arbitration. You know, went to arbitration. The guild awarded it. Interesting. I asked people what they think your theme is, and you would, you'd, I'd ask you what you think the theme is that you tend to center your episodes about, around, and you told me... It's love. love. It's always about love, in one, way, one form or another. Mm -hmm. And you also you wrote for Six Million Dollar Man and Streets of San Francisco, so now you are writing up things that were not Westerns right. or you know, not in the past, not in the future, actually current, present day. Did you find that affected your writing in any way? Was there in any way a, a new thing to learn or do? Nope. I, I just really always like to tell a good story. I don't care what the genre is or the background is. Is the story valid? Does the story work? Mm -hmm. Is the problem real? Is it solvable? Can they do it? Can these characters handle it? Mm -hmm. uh, and what can we learn about those characters as in the course of the story? Have you ever thought about what you would do if you ran, created a new world in the Trek universe? The, you know, the, could you create and run Starfleet Academy... I don't want to. Interesting. I don't want to. I want to do something else. I have other stories to tell. 